Everything in the fourth edition of Age of Sigmar is now an ability, so let's find out what that means for the deployment phase. So it all starts in the setting up of the battlefield section of the General's Handbook. The players are going to roll off, and the winner gets to decide who's attacker and who's defender. The attacker then gets to go grab themselves a beverage while the defender sets up the objectives and the terrain. Almost always the defender is going to follow the terrain map on the back of the card in order to ensure that both territories have equal amounts of terrain. Once the attacker comes back with their beverage, they get to decide which territory is theirs. Now the deployment phase can begin. The deployment phase has three different steps. Step 1, deploy faction terrain features. Step 2, deploy armies. Step 3, use any deployment abilities. This is pretty familiar to anybody who's played third, but there is a very big difference between deploy abilities that have the deploy keyword and abilities that are used in the deployment phase. I would highly recommend you read section 10.0 as it lays these rules out very clearly. The attacker is the person who is going to be beginning deployment first, and in step one, they'll be able to use any ability which has the deploy terrain keywords, which is primarily going to be deploy faction terrain with the deploy terrain keyword. There are some factions like Sylvaneth who have their own special deploy terrain ability. After the attacker uses a deploy terrain ability, the defender will then get to use their deploy terrain ability, and it'll go back to the attacker if they have any more. Once both players are out of deploy terrain abilities, step one is over. In step two, starting with the attacker, the players alternate using abilities that have the deploy keyword. Everybody has access to the deploy unit ability as well as the deploy regiment ability. Almost every faction has access to a faction or unit specific deploy ability, such as Celestial Realms for Stormcast, Hidden Hunters for Hunters of Wanchi, or Zeratol! for Rabble Rousers. It's important to note that the deploy regiment ability lets you use deploy abilities for all units in that regiment before alternating to your opponent. So after you use the deploy regiment ability, you can use it a universal deploy unit ability or any faction specific ability with the deploy keyword in any order you like, as long as it follows the rules of your specific faction deploy ability. This is what is known as a drop. If you have three regiments in your list, your list is a three drop. If you have any auxiliary units in your army, those also count as one drop, but just don't take those, please. You can also just use a deploy unit ability, even if your units are in a regiment, without dropping the whole regiment at once. But if you do this, you do have to use the deploy unit ability on every unit in that regiment, massively increasing how many drops you have. I like to think of deploy abilities as cards that are played during the deployment phase. Say I'm the attacker and I get to use a deploy ability first. My list is a two drop, so I play the deploy regiment card, which then allows me to play my deploy cards for units in that regiment, then my opponent gets to do the same. We do this back and forth until both players have no more deploy abilities to use, and then the person who finished deploying first will be able to decide who goes first. Being able to decide who goes first is extremely important and very useful information going into step three. In step three, we're done alternating. The attacker can now use all their deployment phase abilities. Then the defender will use all their deployment phase abilities. Very importantly, the GHB seasonal rule honor guard is a deployment phase ability, as is many other faction slash unit specific abilities like Seraphon's Asterism Battle Traits, Son of Behemoth's Taker Tribe Battle Formation, Stormcast Knight Quest or Ordained Quest, and Maggotkin of Nurgle Affliction Sist Battle Formation. You can do these in any order that you like, but the attacker will use all their abilities before the defender uses any of theirs. If you're the defender, you will live in a perfect world of information and can side your Honor Guard ability and other deployment phase abilities appropriately. There's a lot of skill expression in this. If you're the attacker and had fewer drops, you decide who goes first, so you may want to use Affliction Sist more aggressively because you know you're guaranteed to have 64 health of flies in your opponent's lines turn 1. Alternatively, if you're the defender, you'll get to see all of your opponent's pre-game shenanigans before you have to pick your Honor Guard ability. Although it may seem a bit intimidating at first, I really like using abilities for deployment. Everything has its order and its place and takes any guesswork out of when timing should happen. Here's a quick rundown of how to set up a GHB game of Age of Sigmar in 4th edition. The players decide on the mission either by rolling on the GHB table or using the pack provided by the tournament organizer. The players roll off and the winner decides who will be the attacker or the defender. The defender sets up the objectives and terrain as described in the mission and terrain layout. The attacker then chooses which territory is theirs. In step one of the deployment phase, the attacker uses an ability with the deploy terrain keyword, followed by the defender. They alternate doing this until both players have no more deploy terrain abilities. In step two, the attacker uses an ability with the deploy keyword, either universal or faction specific, followed by the defender. They alternate doing this until both players have no more deploy abilities. At this point, you'll know which player decides who goes first. In step three, the attacker uses all their deployment phase abilities, then the defender uses all their deployment phase abilities. The person who finished deploying their army first decides who goes first and the game begins. Thanks for watching everyone, I'm trying to get games of AOS in whenever I can and whenever I learn more rules I'll be making more videos of what I learned. Thanks again and always remember to feed your creative side.